Yeah, hi everyone. Um, thanks for joining the talk today. Um, we are super excited to be here and share some of the learnings we um, we have from integrating the LM into Pinterest search. My name is Khan, and today I will be presenting with Mukunda, and we are both machine learning engineers from Search Relevance team at Pinterest. So start with a brief introduction to Pinterest. Um, Pinterest is a visual discovery platform where pinners can come to find inspiration to create a life they love. And there are three main discovery surfaces on Pinterest, the home feed, the related things, and search. In today's talk, we'll be focusing on search and um, where the user can type in their queries and um, find useful, inspiring content based on their information need. And we will share um, how we leverage LN to improve the search relevance. Um, here are some key statistics for Pinterest search. Every month, we handled over 6 billion searches with billions of pins to search from, covering topics from recipe, home decor, travel, fashion, and beyond. And at Pinterest, search is remarkably global and multilingual. We support over 45 languages and are reaching pinners in more than 100 countries. These numbers highlight the importance of search at Pinterest and why we are investing um, in search relevance to improve user experience. So um, this is an overview of how Pinterest search works at the back end. So it's similar to um, many recommendation system at industry. It has query understanding, retrieval, re-ranking, and the blending stage, and finally produced um, relevant and engagement search feeds. And um, in today's talk, we'll be focusing on the semantic relevance modeling that happened at the re-ranking stage and share about how we use LN to improve um, the search relevance on the search. Okay, so um, here's our search relevance model, which um, is essentially a classification model. Given a search query and a pin, the model will predict how much the pin is relevant to this search query. And to measure this, we use a five-point scale um, ranging from the most relevant to most irrelevant. All right, um, now we are gonna share some key learnings we have from using the LN to improve search, Pinterest search relevance. And here are four main takeaways that we would like to um, go into more details. Lesson one, LNs are good at relevance prediction. Um, so before I present um, the result, let me first give a quick overview of the model architecture that we are using. Um, we concatenate the query and the pin text together and pass them into a LN to get an um, embedding. So this is called um, cross-encoder structure, we, we, where we can better capture the interaction between the query and the pin. And then we feed the um, embedding from LN into an NLP layer to produce a five-dimensional vector which correspond to the um, five relevance levels. And during training, we fine tune some open source LM using Pinterest internal data and to better adapt the model to our Pinterest content. And here, um, I'd like to share some results um, to demonstrate that the usefulness of LM. And as a baseline, we use SearchSage which is a Pinterest in-house content and the query embedding. And um, so if you look at the table, you can see that the LM has substantially um, improved the performance of the relevance prediction. And as we use more advanced LMs and increase the model size, the performance keeps improving. And for example, um, the 8 billion Lama 3 model gives um, 12% of improvement over the multilingual bird-based model and 20% of improvement over the search sage embedding model. So um, the lesson here is that um, LMs, they are quite good at relevance prediction. Um, lesson two, the vision language model generated captions and the user actions can be quite useful for content annotations. 
So to use LM for search uh, for relevance prediction, we need to build a text representation of each pin. And here I listed several features that we used in our model. Besides the, um, the title of description of the pin, we also include um, the VOM generated synthetic image caption to directly extract information from the image itself. And besides that, we add some um, user engagement based feature like the board titles um, for the user curated board that the pin has been saved to or um, the queries that led to the highest engagement with this pin on search surface. So these two user action-based features um, serves as additional annotation for the content. And um, here, the five sources of feature together helps to build a more um, robust and comprehensive text representation for each pin. I will, to understand the um, importance of t each vortex feature, we also did some ablation studies. We used the um, VOM generated image caption as a baseline. And um, as you can see, itself already pro um, provide a very solid baseline. And as we sequentially add more vortex feature, we keep seeing performance improvement. And this indicate that enriching the vortex feature is quite useful for relevance prediction. And notably, um, the last two rows of the table shows the performance gain we have by adding these user action based features. So these features turned out to be quite useful for content annotation that help model better understand the content. All right, um, next I will hand over to Mukunta to talk about how we use knowledge distillation to productionize this model. Hey. Yes. Uh, so now we have a good relevance model, which is good at predicting search relevance. Uh, but how do we actually scale this up without bankrupting Pinterest? Uh, usually the answer is knowledge resolution into smaller models. Um, and this is the production served relevance student model that we distilled from the teacher model using semi-supervised learning. Uh, the student model is trained to predict five scale relevance scores too. Uh, it trains using the five uh, scale soft scores produced by the teacher model. Um, and we produce data for this using a semi-supervised learning setup that uh, I'll show in the next slide. So the LLM teacher model is trained on a small set of human labeled data that we get from human annotators who are trained in very specific segments. Uh, we fine tune, and this is a multilingual language model which uses pretty generic features with scale across a lot of different domains, et cetera. Um, and the way we get training data for the student uh, is through uh, sampling from daily search logs, which is um, all the searches uh, people make on Pinterest. Uh, and since we sample daily, uh, this includes any trending queries, all the latest, freshest pins on Pinterest. And this is also remarkably global, like we mentioned. And only a small subset of this comes from the US where most of our human labeled data comes from. Um, we sample from this and we label using the teacher and we scale it up pretty much 100x uh, across different domains, languages, countries where uh, the LLM teacher model produces pretty good labels. We train the student model and this is the model that actually gets served online. Um, and uh, Zooming into the student model, uh, also this also has language models in it, uh, but unlike the teacher model, it's not a cross-encoder. It uh, is a bi-encoder, uh, which essentially means we don't have cross-interactions between the pin and the query uh, representations. Uh, the pin gets embedded separately, query gets embedded separately, and it also uses a lot of other features like um, search change that we previously mentioned for both embedding the query and the pin. Uh, we have graph sage embeddings, which Pinterest has published papers on, um, and OmniSage, and a lot of other embedding features for query and pin. But we also use uh, a lot of pin query text match statistics, like BM25, which we've seen historically perform really well for predicting search relevance. Um, and the reason this scales well is the bi encoder. Uh, bi encoder large language models can scale really well uh, when we uh, use offline inference and caching. Uh, 
the pin embedding here is entirely offline inferred on billions of pins. Uh, it uses predominantly the same text features that we mentioned on the teacher, uh, which helps distill efficiently. Um, and uh, we only uh, re-infer uh, these embeddings every time that these inputs meaningfully change, uh, meaning that uh, every time that we uh, need new embeddings, um, it's only going to run on a few set of new pins. Um, and uh, this is offline inferred, so none of this is happening online when a user issues a search query. Uh, and the query embedding is pretty much uh, real-time inferred online. Uh, and search queries are pretty short. Um, they don't occupy too many tokens, which means uh, we can keep the latencies for the query embedding up to like a few milliseconds. Um, and we also cache this uh, because search queries get repeated a lot, and we get around an 85% cache hit rate. Um, and yeah, this scales really well uh, to actually serve Pinterest traffic. Um, the online results here, uh, the first four numbers are relevance uh, measurements, NDCG, uh, precision at eight, uh, measured on the US, Germany, France, uh, specific segments that we zoomed into. Uh, we can actually see that we get relevance gains international, uh, internationally, even though we started with a very limited set of US data for this particular experiment. Um, and uh, we also see that search fulfillment, which measures engagement on search um, fulfilling actions, uh, also goes up. Uh, also on non-US, even though our uh, starting data was predominantly US. And uh, yeah, uh, large language models are very good at uh, expanding across many different domains, countries, uh, even though uh, they have, weren't explicitly trained for this. Um, and uh, this is a bonus. Uh, we also found that relevance-tuned large language models produce really good rich uh, semantic representations, which are very good general purpose. Uh, this is the same production relevance student model that I shared on the previous slide. Uh, and uh, the pin embedding and the query embedding uh, are basically free representations that we get from these models. Uh, which can be used across Pinterest for representing pins and search queries. Um, we, we also use this to represent boards using the titles, etc. Um, and we found that using these embeddings, especially since they've been distilled from a large language model teacher and also have large uh, language models in them, uh, they are very good at semantic content representations. Uh, and yeah, they perform pretty well across uh, related pins, home feed, and a lot of other surfaces where we've seen uh, representations improve by adding these things. Um, so let me go over the key takeaways again. Um, I think lesson one, we found that LLMs are really good at relevance prediction. Uh, lesson two, we found that visual language model captions are good, uh, exp good ways to imbue them with uh, image representations and uh, user actions are very good content annotations. Um, three, uh, we found that knowledge distillation is a very good way to scale uh, and efficiently serve models uh, online. And uh, lesson four, uh, relevance tuning produces pretty rich representations uh, that embed semantic representations for content really well. Thank you. Um, I wonder if there are any questions from the audience. Please come up to the mics. How did you decide which open source LLMs to fine tune? Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a very good question. So we did a lot of experiments trying different language models, and um, in the previous slide we also shared some um, performance for different language model. Yeah, so we did a lot of experiment and find the one that gives us the best performance. Yeah. Uh, if you could just walk us through somebody typing a search prompt, the confusion that I have is you have like LLMs uh, building some sort of matching. Is it just being used for the label to be distilled or how did you shim that into the buy encoder? It wasn't really clear on the two tower offline airline and how the LLM search kind of influenced that. We use LLMs to distill into a student model which predicts search relevance specifically and produces five scale relevance scores. Um, and it's served at the end of the search pipeline. It's uh, the re-ranking stage. Um, like every recommendation system, we have a lot of 
uh, CGs, which are candidate generators. We have early stage ranking, and this is one of the things that sits further down the pipeline, which actually predicts search relevance scores and uh, is used right before blending to actually produce a feed. So I think it's very similar to most recommender systems. So uh, I have a excuse me, uh, I have a question on how you evolved into this architecture. Like I'm sure Printers has pre LLM era search as well. Like what limitations did you see in those systems that this new architecture solved for? So um, if I'm understanding correctly, your question is about what's the difference between the new system with the yeah. From the what, what was the what was the driver to adopt adopting LLMs uh, for for in in your search pipeline? Did the type did it support new features or is it does it improve on the existing features where you had limitations? I think they definitely improve, uh, especially with visual language model captions. I think we were very effectively able to expand beyond limited markets for actually measuring relevance data and getting relevance data. And yeah, these multilingual models are very good at uh, getting synthetic data for different markets for uh, well. Hey, um, great, great talk. Um, I was wondering why, uh, or if, if the embedding model is inherently multimodal, um, because you have text, which is uh, the, the query, and then you're matching against um, either text, links, or images. And so how do you think about multimodality? It's definitely something we're exploring, but then uh, on a lot of applications, I think we found uh, visual captions are very good at ca uh, capturing what the image has. Um, and we have some very good capturing models in-house, which, uh, yeah, help us. Great, thanks. Great talk. I, yeah, just a quick question. You mentioned that you saw improvements in other languages as well. Did you start with the common baseline model for all languages, or did you have to sort of and just change the features for each language, or did you actually also start with separate models for individual languages? Yeah, I'm curious how you actually saw the improvements manifest everywhere. Yeah, um, so we we use the um, same model for all languages, and we because we we are using the multilingual um, LM, so we believe it can have transferred to other languages. 